week, Austin 8th Annual Big Old Party at Union Park. Up amongst the birds, I suppose. We've got a beautiful backdrop, and we've got another big old brain to my left. It's Michael Whitbrook. And he sounds just super smart, of course, and he's with Sitecore. And for those of you that aren't aware of this company, you got to know there's, there's years and years and years and years of brains behind this. So tell the world about Sitecore. So it's a project to um, make artificial intelligence happen. So by uh, working out how to teach computers all the hundreds of thousands of things that ordinary people know about the world, you know, things like that. If you talk to a microphone, it will record it. Um, that people understand words. All the sorts of things that we just naturally know because we're people and that computers don't know at all because, well, no one told them. So for the average show to get their arms around this, it's like we never thought that AI would ever exist. We, we heard about it in movies, but this is something that is actually now you're making tangible, yes? We're making, tan we're making it tangible, yes. We have systems which can do some of the sorts of things that people do. Uh, a little bit of reading. They're able to produce English. They're able to understand stuff that's said in English. That's brilliant. So what, what, how did you get involved in this project? On a, was it a project and it turned into a company? Or what, what are your, I guess, beginnings? Exactly. The uh, site project was a project um, going back to 1984, in fact, uh, in Austin wow. here. And uh, then about uh, 12 years ago now, it turned into a company, and it's been a company ever since. And uh, now we're trying to uh, get it into a, a point where we can put it out there and let everyone in the world interact with the system. So at this point, so we're in 2008, we're in a Q4. Uh, humor me, but do people take this truly seriously now and appreciate it as, as this label, Semantic Web, has been applied? Or do you feel that there's just too many folks that are going to say, you guys are still too early on this? Well, I think um, they can say that. Well, the question is whether, <laughs> you know, the question is, can we build systems which start to act as if they're intelligent? And I think we're able to begin to do that and some of the other people in the semantic web community are also doing that so you know judge us by what we do not uh, by what we say and that's a really new thing to say about AI because there's been a lot of talking about AI and uh, a lot less doing AI it's true and so you're, what, what has sort of come to the forefront have been little things like uh, maybe something a vacuum cleaner can, that can figure out how we're going to go throughout your house. We, we think that's AI, but maybe it's really not. But this is actually infiltrating any, it's breaking down any, any boundaries. So this is going into our main database, so to speak, which is helping us propel our lives forward, which are our computers. Do you feel like that people will really be able to embrace this on a day-to-day -day basis? I think so. I mean, um, I think that uh, the Roomba, which runs around and works out how to clean your room, really that is AI, but it's AI at the level of, say, a bee, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> what we want to build now is AIs which can live in the world of text, the world of thought. So now, unlike any point in the past, there's a huge, there's an ecosystem for these things to live in. There are things like Wikipedia, there's the internet, there are search engines. And so something which even understands a little bit of what's out there on the web can start to act in a, a really intelligent way, even if it's not all that much more intelligent than a bee. It's a bee that understands English, and that alone can change the way we interact with computers. Brilliant. And then this would then be coming around the corner, folks. Be wary. We will be right north the oh, geek 